All right, good evening, everyone. Good to see you tonight. Let's all uh, stand. We're going to start by singing, Oh, worship the King, all glorious above. Gratefully sing, power in His love. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above, and gratefully sing His one and His love. Our shield and defender, the Ancient of Days, pavilion in splendor and girded with praise. Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It reads in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends from the plains, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. On the last, frail children of dust and feeble as frail, in thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end. Our maker, defender, redeemer, and friend. Well, let's open up uh, this evening in a word of prayer. Lord, uh, we are uh, thankful to be in your house tonight, thankful to be uh, with God's people, uh, opening up God's word. And uh, Lord, I pray that everything that is said and done, will truly uh, bring you honor and glory, and may you encourage our hearts for the week to come uh, through the fellowship, through the Word, leading in the, word, uh, leading in the Spirit of God. Lord, we love you. Teach us to love you more. And uh, Lord, as we sing your praises tonight, we pray that uh, you are pleased in that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please remain standing. We're going to sing uh, this next song. Uh, we, I believe we did it before, a few weeks ago. Uh, but uh, his mercy is more, and uh, so when you, if you don't know it, that's okay, but when you catch it, just uh, hop in with us here, uh, but uh, it's a great new hymn that's been written. Here we go. Stronger than darkness and new 
Be seated tonight. His mercy is more. I uh, don't have any um, missions uh, letters for us to read tonight, uh, but I do have what I believe uh, is a new song that I want us to go ahead and try here tonight. Scott, could you give me, could you give me a little bit more up here for myself? I just can't, can't quite hear all that well. But uh, what else is new? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, this song is called "We Will Remember." And uh, this is a song that we started singing down in, uh, in Alabama, and it just talks about um, all the things that God is and all the things that God has done and, uh, and the fact that uh, as his children, uh, we're going we're gonna to think about it. We're going to remember it, and uh, we're going to praise him for it. All right, so when you catch it, just hop in, okay? And uh, let's worship the Lord together tonight. Oh, we will stop and give 
stop and give you praise for great is thy faithfulness he's a faithful god is he not amen amen all right well let's go ahead and uh, dismiss our young people out tonight you guys have a great time together they're in youth group and take your Bibles tonight and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter number 4. 1 Corinthians chapter number 4. As uh, we continue our walk through the book of 1 Corinthians. And um, I'll be honest with you, uh, tonight's message um, is not for you. You say, what? Well, uh, honestly, it's really not, uh, because Paul is dealing with something um, pretty intimate uh, to himself and uh, to anyone who would um, serve the Lord in, in uh, this capacity. Uh, so we're going to take a look at tonight uh, the measure of a minister, the measure of a minister, all right? And that's found in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter number 4, Verses 1 through 7. Let's read those verses tonight. And then we're going to hop in to God's Word. It says, Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and the stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self, for I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. And then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brother, and I have uh, in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn not to uh, learn uh, in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no uh, one of you be puffed up for. Uh, oh, I'm going to get it right here in just a moment. That no that that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For what maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou, hast, that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? Okay, it's a lot of it's and it's and stuff in there. So uh, we'll work through it tonight. Uh, but let's go uh, to the Lord in prayer once more. Father, again, as we come now into a time where we are uh, open up your word, we, we want to be intentional about it. We uh, want to be passionate about it. I pray, God, that you would uh, give truth to all of us tonight. Uh, Lord, studying and reading and listening to others speak about this and looking at words uh, through this passage, I have uh, been greatly challenged uh, in my own heart. And uh, Lord, I, I think that there's a, a deep challenge for each of us. And Lord, I pray that uh, you'd help us tonight. And if that happens, we know uh, you'll be greatly helped. I know there's many in here that um, brought in burdens, they, uh, things heavy on their heart, family members, loved ones, um, things that are going on here and there. Uh, Lord, I pray that for a few moments we would uh, be undistracted as we listen to the word of God in Jesus name. Amen. So uh, as we've talked about many, many different times now, Paul has uh, written to the uh, Corinthians to fight two things. He's fighting two things. He's fighting against human philosophies and against the exaltation of uh, human leaders. Uh, he, he, he's been trying to get across to the Corinthians. Listen, uh, neither of these things have room in the church. And I want you to understand 
here in chapter number four as he begins, let no uh, let a man so account of us. So he's writing to this church. He says, this is what I want you to think about. I want you to understand this is the thought process that you should have about the church leadership. All right. And, and I'll confess with you. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, it's weird. OK, because I'm going to be talking about myself here. And I'm just telling you, I didn't want to do it. I thought about not doing it. And then uh, upon uh, reading it, Brother Gary, I knew that that wouldn't be right. And if I'm going to be a faithful minister again, I have to follow through with this passage too. So uh, here we go. The measure of a minister. The measure of a minister. Uh, the truth is we all, have, uh, we all have a favorite speaker, right? I know who yours is. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I have a favorite I have a favorite speaker, and I'm not going to tell you who it is. And uh, we've got people that we enjoy their style. We enjoy uh, maybe their stories or how they bring the truths out. We all have somebody uh, that we like to hear speak. Or maybe you don't like to hear anybody speak. Maybe, they, maybe that's the category that you fit in tonight. But Paul was dealing uh, with this, not just on that surface level of, hey, this guy's a good speaker, a good teacher, but uh, they were inordinately uh, putting up leadership uh, above what it should be. And honestly, historically, uh, independent, fundamental Baptist churches have struggled heavily with leader worship. And, and, and let me just say, that's wrong. Uh, I am not God. I'm not a God. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, anyone to, uh, to bow down to. I'm uh, be honest with, with you in the scriptures where uh, John is taken uh, in Revelation and, and he sees an angel and the angel bows down and says, hey, stand up. I am, I'm a fellow laborer with you. All right. That, it's honestly the uh, attitude in which I try and, and live my life. It's not always that way. Um, but uh, I uh, am telling you that uh, I'm just a man. OK. And God has called me to this place. I, I believe uh, he has called me. I believe he's equipped me. I believe he's going uh, to use me, but still just a man. So let's see here uh, the measure of a minister. A couple of things here. He says in the very first verse or, or, or the very uh, thing we uh, need to see first, know what uh, you are, know what you are. And he gives two um, things. He says, you're the minister of God and the steward of the mysteries of God. Now, if you're taking notes tonight, I'd encourage you to do that. Uh, I write out these uh, two terms uh, because I'm going to give you definitions for both of them because the Greek words that are used for these two things uh, sometimes get lost in translation, okay? And, and that's just kind of what happens, and, and I understand that, and I, I even understand uh, when the King James uh, translators translate uh, from Greek uh, into, into English that uh, they're trying to uh, set apart uh, and, and build up a church, all right? And uh, I get that, but uh, I want you to see that the word minister here, uh, let me come back to that. The word minister here uh, really means this, an under rower, an under rower. Uh, if I could give you a Greek term here, uh, hyperetas, all right? That uh, is uh, probably butchered, but uh, it means the lowest galley slave that's the literal word the guy so so on these giant ships uh when they would have uh different uh, uh stacks of oars if they had three stacks of oars the guy at the very bottom of the ship who by the way was chained to the ship he was chained to his seat he was chained to his row who was never going to see the light of day except it pierced through the side of his um uh of the ship where he was rowing for that's the guy. That's what Paul says, that we are the hyperetas, we are the ministers of God. We're the guys rowing at the bottom of the ship. Let me tell you something. These guys had no rights. These guys had no choice. These guys had no plans except row. Row. Row your boat. <laughs> that was it. That's the word, though. But he says also this, he says that we are the ministers of God. He said, I want you to understand that we are the hyperetes, we're the under rowers, but also that we are the stewards of God. And I'm going to come back to those verses because those are important. Uh, but it says the stewards of the mysteries of God. And the word steward there really means house manager. 
house manager, okay? And, and the mysteries of God, what's a mystery? A mystery is something that was previously unknown, and God has made it known, okay? Nothing uh, magical or mystical about that. It's someone uh, who is taking the, uh, God is saying, listen, you are the house manager of the things that people didn't used to know and make them known, all right? And uh, here, here's the idea uh, behind all of these things, those two uh, things that Paul says here. He says, know what you are. I want us to understand, though, in, a, uh, in some sense, all of us carry the uh, burden uh, of these ideas. P Peter says it like this in 1 Peter 4, verse 10. He says, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Have you received the grace of God in your life? Answer that question. If you're a child of God, the answer to that question is yes. Okay? And, and Jesus even said in some, you know, uh, some 30, some 60, some 100, it varies. Okay? There's different talents for different uh, uh, folks that God gives out. But understand, every man that has received the gift, you are called to minister in the gift of God to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Notice what? Uh, Paul says in Colossians 1, 20, uh, 5, it says this, Wherefore, I made a minister, okay? I made an under rower, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Notice what verse number 4, verse number 1 says, Let a man so account of us. Paul said, I want you to understand, this is how you should think of the minister. This is how you should think of the preacher. He is a under rower. He is a steward of the house of God. When I came to work this morning, I, um, uh, I've been trying to train our dog Hershey uh, to, to, to stay out, okay? Uh, to stay out for a few hours and, uh, you know, uh, not tear anything up. I'll come home. And she's been doing really, really great until I went home for lunch today. And I went home for lunch today. There was a bag that was taken off uh, of the dining room table. There were newspapers that were taken off the dining room table. There was a roll, a, a roll of, of paper towels. How did you get a whole roll of paper all strewn across the, the dining room into the living room? Listen, uh, the whole point of leaving the dog out is that uh, she could be a steward of the house while I'm gone. And she did a terrible job. You know, the truth is when, uh, when we're home and uh, someone comes up to the front door or a car walks by or the doorbell rings, uh, she will bark as fiercely as she possibly can. But when I come home and uh, she's out, but I come home and it's dark in there, she doesn't make a sound. <laughs> she's not here. <laughs> As a matter of fact, i got to find out where she's hiding when I come home. But today she was an awful steward of my house. In a week or so, when I bring Whitney home, she'll find out what kind of steward I've been of our house. But see, I'm no fool. I'm going to just hire someone to clean it all up, right? I'm just kidding. I'm not. I helped you. All right. <laughs> and Paul said, I'm a minister. I'm a steward of the house of God. I'm a house manager. Which really led me um, to uh, ask myself this question then. You know, if, if this is what I am, then the truth is, what is required of me? That, that's really a, a, a natural thought. You know, uh, John, you're a pharmacist. There are things that are required of you. All right? You're not uh, to be at the pharmacy doing the plumbing. Well, at least I hope not. All right? You're not on the roof doing the roofing. Uh, you know, maybe you could help out here and there. But there's something that is uniquely required of you. As a pharmacist, well, as a minister of God, uh, Paul says this, the very first thing that is required of us, this is the, the, the quintessential thing, verse number two, it says, moreover, it says, above everything else, the cream that rises to the top, this is the mark. Moreover, it is required in stewards, in a house manager, that a man be found faithful. Faithfulness to God's house is the highest level of scrutiny for a steward. Faithfulness to God's house is the highest level of scrutiny for a steward. Think of this. Uh, how many of you could uh, go on a vacation for a week, 
uh, be away for a week, 10 days or whatever, and you have someone in your life that you could trust to go into your house and live in your house and stay there and trust and know well, without being a nervous wreck while you're away, without looking through your ring camera, without uh, having a videotape uh, a recorder going, you could trust that individual to walk into your house and leave what is precious behind and take care of things. That is the weight that is on uh, the shoulders of the steward. That faithfulness, a, a, a faithful man, the Bible asks, a faithful man, who can find? Who can find? Boy, it's easy to find someone that would proclaim their own goodness, but a faithful man, who can find? Faithfulness to God's house is the highest level of scrutiny for a steward. Matthew 24, 45 says this, Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? He answers that question. He answers that question later in the parable of the talents. When the one uh, the Lord gives five talents to one and two to another and one to another. And he comes back and he says this in verse 21. He says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. You know, the truth is, the things that God uh, has given us here on this earth, each and every one of us are stewards. Tom, you're a steward of your house and the things that God has blessed you with. Abram, you're a steward of your house and your business and the things that God has, each and every one of us. I'm a steward of God. You're a housekeeper of God. And God is uh, taking account of how we use what he's given us. We see here this question that drives me to, to ask, ask that question, you know, if uh, know what I am, then what's required of me, then, then this. But well, what's in the house of God then? What's in the house of God? This, this figurative house of God, if you will. All right. Uh, the Word of God. Can we, can we say that the Word of God's in the house? Notice what uh, 2 Corinthians 2.17 says. Paul's defending himself. He says, for we are not as many which corrupt the Word of God, Hey, turn on your TV. Turn on the radio station. Go online. You can find out. You can listen. You can download. You can plaster uh, all over your house and your life individuals that are corrupting the Word of God. They're a dime a dozen. They're a dime a dozen. And most of the time, you find them uh, sitting... Uh, Milking the cow of the congregation, if you will. And Paul says, listen, for we're not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity. As of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Listen. Listen. a scary thing not to get up in front of you but to know that the word of God is being listened to by God he says in the sight of God speak we in Christ it's a high level so what's in the house of God the word of God what about the people of God? Are they, are they in this figurative house that, that we are called, that I'm called, uh, and that others are called, and that and in some sense you are called as a minister, uh, as a partaker of the grace of God? The people of God. Notice what is said here in Acts 20 in verse number 28. It says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Oh, we talked about that uh, this Sunday morning. The fact that Jesus Christ purchased you with his own blood as a gift to God the Father. God gave a gift to Christ. Christ turns around, gives it back. 
uh, uh, to God the Father. He says, listen, the Holy Spirit has set you over as an overseer to feed the flock, not fleece the flock. (laughs) Why? Because he purchased it with his own blood. Listen, a great price has been paid for each and every one of us. What's the measure of a minister? Does he feed the flock? Is he feeding the flock? Notice a grave warning in Hebrews chapter number 13, verse 17. He says, obey them that have the rule over you. Now, he's speaking in the context of spiritual authority, okay? Spiritual authority, speaking of the church. And submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give an account that they may do it with joy. Hey, I want to go one day and say, hey, did you see these guys at Calvary? I mean, did you see this church in Fremont, Nebraska? Yeah, Nebraska, yes, Lord, the one that's in the center of the country, you know, right there in the middle. Yeah, I had to, I had to, look, at, I had to look it up too, Lord. That's where it was. But did you see them? Hey, hey, did you see? Did you see what they did? Did you see how much faith they had? Did you see how big a steps they were willing to take? Did you see that they were unashamed? Did you see that they were unafraid? God, did you see what they were willing to do? He says, As they that must give an account, that they may do it with joy. And not grief. He says, for that's unprofitable for you. Not for me, but for you. What's in God's house? I I think God's word should be a part of God's figurative house here. And God's people are certainly a part of that as well. But the offerings to God. The offerings to God. The Word of God has a lot to say about money, and the Word of God has a lot to say about money and the minister. Notice what it says here in 1 Timothy chapter number 3, verses 1 through 7, we find the qualifications of a pastor. It says, this is a true saying, if a man man desire the office of a bishop, that word bishop, overseer, okay, elder, bishop, pastor, shepherd, uh, these words are interchangeable. Uh, Really, in the New Testament, we find that. Um, He desireth a good work, okay? So he desires this good work, so there's some requirements that follow along with that. He says, a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy, a filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, and not covetous. There it is, right there in the middle. Right there in the middle. Not greedy, a filthy lure. That, that, that's money, all right? I know we don't talk like that. Hey, you got, did you bring some lucre with you? No, 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 the filthy kind. That's what we want. <laughs> what does he mean? He means ill-gotten gain. Ill-gotten gain. I heard a story of a deacon <laughs> that uh, every time he took the offering, he'd take a 20 out of the plate for serving God that day what are you out your mind why are you looking don't be looking around don't be pointing I'm just kidding (laughs) not greedy of filthy lucre he says one that ruleth well his own house I'll read them all to you having his children in subjection with all gravity for if a man know not how to rule his own house how shall he take care of the church of God of the house of God questions here he says not a novice not a not a new believer lest being lifted up with pride he fall into the condemnation of the devil in verse number seven moreover rising to the top he must have a good report of them that are without lest he fall into the reproach and the snare of the devil he goes on in first timothy chapter six verses eight through ten he says having food and raiment let us okay who's the us there he's writing to timothy timothy's a pastor in the town of Ephesus, it's a wicked city, it's a pagan city, uh, it's full of idolatry, it's full of sensuality, it's full of wickedness. 
He says, and having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Why? But they that will be rich fall into a temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition for the love of money. Not money. Okay? Everybody needs some money. Oh, come on, guys. I know you got bills. I know I got bills. He says the love of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Thank you, Tom. Which while some having coveted at, boy, when I'm gonna, how am I going to make that next dollar? How am I going to make it? I got one more day, one more dollar. Which some having coveted after, they have erred from the, what's money replaced, church? The, excuse me. What does the love of money replace? The faith. The love of God. They have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. What's the minister? What is the measure of a minister? Does he love money? Or does he love God? Does he love people? Or does he love money? Fourthly here, and this is by no means an exhaustive list here on a Wednesday night, but in this house of God that we're, we're peering through the windows here, we're kind of taking a look at as a, a manager, a minister, a steward, a house steward of the, the house of God. Um, I think God's glory should be in there. God's house should be full of God's glory. And the truth is so many Preachers preach for their own glory instead of the glory of God. Their voice isn't being heard, and so they scream louder. Their church isn't being viewed, so they get more drastic. They get more coarse. They don't have enough people, so they get more worldly. I think God's house should be full of, of God's glory. What's in God's house? God's word, God's people, God's offerings, in God's glory. Thirdly tonight, I think we see this. And Paul says, let a man to account of us. Listen, this is how, this is how you've got to think of me as a minister of Christ the under rower, the, the steward, the house manager of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, he says, it's a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. Paul, what are you talking about? This is what he's saying. He's saying in verse number three that the judgment or the sentence that, that's passed by other men is, is incredibly arbitrary, only God matters. Number three, always remember, only God. Always remember, only God. He says the judgment or the sentence that, is, that are passed on man is arbitrary. Only God's judgment, only God's sentence matters, right? Uh, only this, only the, the final thing. Get, the Bible says, uh, don't, don't be afraid of the, the guy that can kill your body. Be afraid of the guy that can uh, uh, send your soul and to hell and destroy you for eternity. That's who you should fear. That's who you should uh, you know, live your life for. Verse number four, he says the sentence and judgments of men. Hey, listen, that's completely arbitrary. Only God's matter, only God's matters. Then he says in verse number three and four at the end, he says, self-examination is too low a bar. You know why? Because aren't we so gracious with ourselves? We're so, we so easily can let ourselves off the hook. You know what? The bar is almost so low, I just stepped over it sometimes. He says, listen, there's one standard. And the standard is only God. Verse number 5, or, or look at with me in Revelation 22, uh, verse number 12, it says this, And behold, this is Christ coming. He says, Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me, and I give to every man according as his work shall be. If the bar is low, the rewards are low. 
the bar is Christ, then the rewards are high. He says this in 2 Corinthians 5, 9 and 10, he says, Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. That's Christ. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every man may receive the things done in his body according to, at, uh, to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. It's the same. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 through 15 that we looked at a couple weeks ago uh, about it being a wood, hay, stubble. Every man's work shall be made known, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive Reward, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. There's one bar, there's one standard, and that's God, only God. Verse number five, he says, don't be in a hurry to judge the motives of others. Hearts, only God can do that. Look at verse five. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make known the counsels of the hearts, and then every man shall have praise of God. Now, understand this. When when this happens, remember, there's therefore now no condemnation, right? There's just loss of reward. There's the, the, there's there's the wiping away of the tears. But there's there's this is uh, a not a a. Uh, a condemnation uh, uh, for sin, for, for things that are done wrong. He said, listen, uh, when Christ makes all these things known, God makes all these things known, then we'll have praise of God. He says, don't be in a hurry to judge the motives of others' hearts. Only God can do that. And verse number six, he says, don't exalt man. Only God. Don't exalt men. Only God. Let's read verse 6. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred myself to Apollos for your sakes. He said, listen, I'm, whatever I've taught you, whatever I've given you, whatever, whatever you think of me, Apollos and I are together on this, all right? That ye might learn not to think of men above that which is written. For no one of you to be puffed up against one another. You know what happens when, when you lift up one guy, Joe, and, and uh, you know, uh, Patty, you lift up somebody else? You know, what happens? You guys are at odds. And he says, listen, if, if I lift up Christ, and you lift up Christ, and you lift up Christ, then we ain't fighting about nothing. There's one focus. There's one goal. There's one glory in mind he says don't exalt men only god only god and lastly in verse number oh well excuse me first corinthians 9 16 says this for though i preach the gospel i have nothing to glory of for necessity is laid upon me yea woe is unto me if i preach not the gospel paul is saying listen maybe if i was doing this thing willingly uh maybe yeah sure uh, I was going out of my way and being nice and kind, then, then maybe you could congratulate me, maybe you could uh, think of me something. But he said, listen, I'm preaching the gospel because of compulsion, because if I don't preach the gospel, I'll be destroyed, is what he's saying on the inside. He says, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. Verse number seven, understand, none of us have what we have except only God blessed us with it. None of us have what we have, except only God has blessed us with it. Let's read verse number 7. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hast not received? Paul says, listen, Christians, stop walking around with this, I've got the latest and greatest and most bestest attitude, and understand that anything you have has been given to you by God. 
You didn't earn it. You weren't born with it. You ever heard the term self-made man? Okay. Can we just say this? No one was ever there when they were made. (laughs) Praise God for it. You weren't there. God was. God was there. God has made you the way that you are. God has blessed you with the things that he has blessed you with. He's burdened you with the things he's burdened you with. God has. If you have something to say, if you have something to boast in, something to argue about, go to God. We talked about that Sunday morning. So what then is the measure of a minister? What is the measure of a minister? And it is this, that he is faithful to God and thereby faithful to all that God has entrusted him with. Faithful to God and faithful to all that God has entrusted him with. And, and really, it's it just kind of this cascading effect and that all that God has entrusted him with learns to be faithful to God, okay? And thereby faithful to all that God has entrusted them with. It's on and on and on and on. For all of us to be more faithful, more faithful, more surrendered, more willing, Serving more, loving more, giving more to God. Faithful to God, not to me. Listen, if, if the day comes, and I pray it never does, but if the day comes where I get up behind this pulpit and I never say, open your Bibles, you need to fire me. It's over. Gigs up. If there's, if there's ever a time where money becomes an issue, you need to fire me. It's over. Gigs up. If there's ever a time where I am unfaithful to God, unfaithful to my wife, unfaithful to my family, unfaithful to the church, fire me. Gigs up. The measure of a minister. Let's pray. Father, in some sense, you've called all of us to be the ministers of God to our families, to our wives or to our husbands, certainly to our kids, to our employees, to those we work with. We're we're supposed to be ministers of the God. We're giving it out everywhere we go. All of us fall under this category, and in some form or fashion, to some degree, to some level, we're going to be held to all of these things for reward's sake. Not for condemnation's sake, but for reward's sake. So... So, Lord, this message is for all of us. But tonight, I'd be a fool to think that you're not talking to me. That you're not talking to the pastor across town. You're not talking to the pastor across the street. You're not talking to the pastors in Omaha. Lord, you're talking to us. God, I want to be a faithful minister. of the mysteries of God, of the house of God. Lord, I want to row against the current of this world, giving out the gospel. And Lord, I believe that if I rely on you for the strength, for the will, for the faith, for the desire, for the passion to do that, that you will open up the blessings of heaven 
on this place and on your people. Help me, God, to be a faithful minister. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank all of you for joining us uh, on live stream tonight. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. In just a moment, we're going to share prayer requests with one another. And uh, if you have requests, you can leave some comments down there uh, in the uh, comment section, or you can send us a, a private message. And uh, we'd love to pray for you. If you're local, uh, we'd love to see you. We're here Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., and then also Sunday morning, 10.30 is our worship service, 6 p.m. on Sunday night. If you kind of just want to get your feet wet, it's really a, a family service. We, our kids come and uh, say Bible verses, and uh, we give out some candy. There's kids programs on Wednesday night uh, from there's nursery for the babies all the way up uh, to the teens. All the teens are, are in nursery. We're making sure that they're learning all their blocks and squares and circles and things like that. We'd love to see you, so come join us sometime. Hope you guys have a great night.